Justin Trudeau shows that he's literally the laziest prime minister in Canada's history as his days off tally how much? Let's get into it. Oh, yeah. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. Justin Trudeau, um, a lot of people, it's no surprise that, you know, he doesn't show up in the House of Commons. He's always absent during question period. People assume that he's hiding under his desk, that uh, he's too afraid to face uh, <laughs> the Conservative Party of Canada or anybody who's opposing his woke ideologies and woke views uh, in Parliament. Now, a recent article has come out um, stating uh, about 10 days ago, six days ago, sorry, at the filming of this video, um, stating that Justin Trudeau has taken quite a few personal days. Uh, I wanted to get into that and a little bit of where Canada's headed and why I think um, the writing again is on the wall. I've talked about my opinion pieces before that Justin Trudeau's on his way out, but there is something you can do about it and we're going to get into that later on in the video. Uh, but first, let's talk about Trudeau's personal days. Now, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of people right now um, when it comes to vacation times with your jobs, when it comes to time off work, a lot of people usually only take, you know, two to three weeks a year. And those are days given to them, allotted to them, uh, in order to take time. But most people can't even afford to take that time off as it's too expensive to go on vacation. And people right now are just going check to check and, and making it by, um, the skid of their teeth. But, but Justin Trudeau devotes a quarter of his time. Uh, as prime minister to personal days shows data the pm's 680 personal days were mostly on weekends but included 88 days in british columbia 31 in costa rica nine in jamaica and eight in the bahamas now weekends fine you know call it what you want to people do get time off um you know a lot of people get time off from their jobs they get at least two days a week if again they can afford to uh but justin Trudeau, 680 personal days when you're running a country that's an equivalency of almost two years off of work. Could you imagine in the eight years that he's been here? Uh, could you imagine if you went into your job and uh, in eight years you took off two years worth of work and were paid for it, I might add. You know, it's not like Justin Trudeau takes his 680 personal days and they dock his pay for those days. He's he's paid. He's given security detail. He's given uh, his groceries paid for by the taxpayers, his home paid for by taxpayers. He gets to jet set around the world on the taxpayer's dime. Here he is, 680 personal days. Uh, this is a reminder, speaking of jet setting around the world, uh, we don't have any sponsors on this channel, but ladies and gentlemen, if you're fans of our materials, you'll see over here to the side that um, not only do we have merchandise, but my best-selling books and How the Prime Minister Broke Canada, our newest iteration into the publishing universe uh, and sequel to How the Prime Minister Stole Freedom, still sitting in number one on Amazon uh, head over, get your copies right now. If you're not a fan of Amazon, head over to my website, www.unacceptablefringebooks.com. There is a link below in the description. You can pick up signed copies if you're looking for a special gift for somebody over Christmas. Uh, we haven't really talked about the book in a few days, and I apologize again, folks, but hey, bills got to be paid. So if, uh, if you're wanting to get your copies, they're moving fast. Uh, I will be ordering more copies as we run out, but just so you don't have to wait. And if you want to get gifts in time for Christmas, better to order now versus later. Head over to unacceptablefringebooks.com to pick up your signed copies. Uh, all prices on that site include free Canada-wide shipping as well as every book with a signature. Uh, now, as the, the National Post reports here, since coming to power in 2015, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has taken 680 personal days the equivalent of 22 months or nearly two years as an analysis of his public itinerary shows. The Prime Minister's office has marked as per, uh, personal days as da uh, daily schedules 24% of the calendar days since he first formed government, excluding election campaigns. The PMO maintains that the demands of the job means Trudeau still works on days it listed as personal, uh, but calls suggestions to the contrary false and absurd. Trudeau's total includes vacations he took with his family during holiday seasons, summer breaks, many weekends, and brief out-of-town getaways. Again, we're built to the taxpayer. Uh, since becoming uh, Prime Minister, Trudeau has used a total of 88 personal days holidaying in Tofino, Whistler, Revelstoke, 
other locations of British Columbia. That's more time than his itineraries list him traveling to Alberta on official business, not including the six personals he booked in Lake Louise at the end of 2017. So skiing is a top priority for the prime minister. It's too bad, you know, getting the budget in order or making life affordable for Canadians isn't. He also took time while in New York, Florida, Montana, and Vermont, the itinerary show. The bulk of the days, 68% were taken on weekends and spent mostly in the National Capital Region. His longest continuous stretch of personal days, 17, came over the holiday season in 2016. So over two weeks holidays. The Prime Minister's personal day rate at 24% is still well below the 34% of days in a year most Canadian workers are off, including statutory holidays and two weeks of paid vacation. But again, those people aren't running the country. Like, <laughs> I love how they try to be sympathetic. Well, it's still less than what most people do. Um, when most people go on vacation, their mortgage isn't paid for by others. Their food isn't paid for by others. Their jet fuel isn't covered by others. Their food isn't covered by others while on holiday. Their holiday itself isn't covered by others. I could go on. Although his office may have declared a personal day with no government business scheduled, the 24-7 job leading a G7 country can intrude on private time. The Prime Minister routinely and regularly works on days listed personal in the itinerary, his office said in an emailed statement. This can include calls with staff, calls with stakeholders, uh, or briefings with officials. The PMO says he has been engaged every single day during the current crisis in the Middle East, the COVID-19 pandemic, Russia's war on the Ukraine, among other issues. Of course, those are his top priorities. Trudeau has often spoken about the need to balance work and personal lives. At the start of his first mandate in 2015 in a television interview with the CBC, he hoped to spend as much time with his three children as his new position allowed. I need to be ruthless to, I need to be really ruthless, sorry, to ensure I have time with my family, time with Sophie and time to decompress. Well, we all know how that turned out. Uh, Sophie left him for a doctor and his children seem to be doing just fine virtue signaling without him. Um, during a 2016 road trip to Japan, Japan, sorry, for a G7 Leaders Summit, Trudeau took a day to celebrate his 11th wedding anniversary with Sophie, a uh, time not noted of his official itinerary. Uh, vacation time has been a potential issue for U.S. presidents, too. Donald Trump was reported to have taken off 20, 26% of his term, much of it spent at golf clubs and other properties he owned. The difference with Donald Trump is that he was actually doing his job, though. <laughs> Justin Trudeau is just living it up. Donald Trump also wasn't taking any pay. If you'll remember when he was the president of the United States, he illegally had to take $1, which he did, uh, but the rest was done at, at his own his own welfare. He chose to do it for $1. Um, Republicans accused President Joe Biden of taking 382 days off, about 40% of his time in office. Um, although their calculation included working days he spent away from the White House at his home in Delaware. An analysis by the Washington Post put the figure at 256 days as of May. So Justin Trudeau, needless to say, takes a lot of vacation time. And I've often said this is the writing on the wall. This is the beginning of the end for the liberals. I believe that he just doesn't care. Now we've seen that. Now again, these days are over his eight years. But as we move forward, this was brought to my attention, by the way, by uh, TikTok uh, infamous and uh, Twitter parent Bradshaw. Uh, I was on Bradshaw's TikTok channel on this last Saturday where uh, we did an interview. Of course, she was uh, promoting my new book, um, and we sat down to talk a little bit about politics and Justin Trudeau, but she pointed out something here that's starting to show the writing on the wall and where I think uh, the Trudeau liberals are headed in the future. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there is something you can do about this, and there is something that we can do to kind of get the ball rolling, and uh, I'll show you how to do that right after we talk about this video. But Bradshaw's noticed here that when the liberals are starting to jump ship and when they're starting to show um, that things could be changing, Christian Freeland is no longer on the board of trustees for the World Economic Forum. There is something about to go down that she can no longer be in on. Freeland is still a member of the WEF, uh, but she's no longer on the board. Let's see what Bradshaw had to say about this. <laughs> well, I was just on the World Economic Forum webpage looking at the board of trustees. Somebody's missing. Christia Freeland. Hmm. 
Here's your board of trustees. She used to be number four on the list, and now she's not. She's not even on the managing board, but she is still a member of the World Economic Forum. I just find this interesting timing considering the liberals are tanking. And I also find this interesting timing because we all know our CPP is invested in the World Economic Forum, which also brings us to Alberta, who is pulling, trying to pull Alberta out of the CPP. I'm thinking there's some type of investigation and Christina Freeland need to be washed from the World Economic Forum Board of Trustees. What do you guys think? So it's interesting to see that. But of course, something else that Bradshaw's brought out is a petition uh, that, well, she hasn't brought out, but she's brought to our attention, I should say. Uh, of course, she's she's tagged Elon Musk uh, for this petition uh, to get uh, the House of Commons petition for a non-confidence vote against Justin Trudeau moving. Uh, now, of course, uh, it is Michelle Ferrari, uh, conservative MP out of uh, Peterborough, Ontario, who's put this petition together. It's amassed 26,168 signatures at the time of filming this video. Uh, I will have a link in the video description, so make sure to head over, sign, excuse me, that petition. Um, as you see here, now again, I, I hear a lot of negativities in the comments of people saying, hey, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to change. Listen, that very well may be so, but we still need to be present and show that we care about our country. I would urge everybody, um, there's, there's power in numbers. Go and sign the petition. I've signed the petition. I would highly encourage you all to. Um, again, it's at ourcommons.ca, so that's linked to the government. And I will have a link in the description of the video as the petition to the House of Commons Whereas we, the citizens of Canada, have lost confidence in Justin Trudeau and the Liberal NDP coalition. Again, these days off play into that for me. Um, we call on the House for a vote of no confidence. We ask for an election 45 days after the vote if won. The current government elected is not acting in the best interest of all of its citizens. The policies of this government aren't aligning with the crisis Canada is facing. Housing costs, uh, infringement of civil liberties, highest inflation in history unbalanced immigration policies, taxation to the point of poverty, weakening of our economy and importing natural resources that Canada already has and underutilizes, and based on the past eight years of this Prime Minister, Canadians do not have confidence in the Prime Minister after five ethics investigations and Canada's reputation being tarnished on a global scale under his leadership. To the extent that Canada is being discluded from participating in statements regarding important geological or geopolitical, sorry, events. We, the undersigned citizens and residents of Canada, call upon the House of Commons to call for a vote of no confidence and a federal election 45 days following the vote. Again, uh, it started on, uh, it was open for signature starting November 24th. Uh, it's closed as of Christmas Eve. So again, the link will be down in the description, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to head over, sign the petition, get your signatures on there. Again, at the time of filming this video, um, we're at 26,168 signatures. The more we can get on there, the better. Um, again, who knows the way things are going. As we've seen the block join with the Liberals to shoot down the carbon tax, We've seen NDPs are starting to overtake the Liberals in terms of votes. They may start to see a little bit of a benefit to gain some seats. So a petition like this, you never know um, if it could push the NDP party to kind of break their coalition um, and maybe help us out. <laughs> Doubtful, but hey, every little bit matters. One person can make a difference. Head over, sign the petition. Let me know what you guys think about Trudeau's days off and, and Freeland leaving uh, the board or no longer being on the board of the WEF. Does this look like the end of days for the Liberals? Are you surprised at Justin's absence from the House of Commons? Um, and again, I know people are allotting it to weekends, but again, you're the leader of a G7 country. Kind of comes with the territory. But let me know again down below what you guys think. If it's your first time here, I hope this video has earned your subscription. As you're hitting that button, make sure to head over and click your notification bell. Turn on your notifications and join us live here on the channel every Sunday night at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time where we do the weekly wrap and go over everything that's happened in the previous week, everything coming up in the week ahead. And we shoot conversation back a little forth with uh, the community and answer all your guys' questions and have a fun little hangout. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you there, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.